Hello, everyone, and welcome to a Create with Kylie art tutorial video. In this video, we're going to go over a couple of artistic techniques required to be successful in the culminating activity for the grade 10 visual arts class, the AVI 2O class. Now, in the uh, culminating activity, I ask you guys to go around the city and find architecture that's been obviously influenced by ancient Roman and Greek architecture, and then do a drawing and then a painting of two different buildings. To uh, be most successful with this project, um, I want to do a practice session where I've given you an image, a photocopy of the Roman Colosseum. It's one of the things that we learned about in our art history lessons. And we're going to do a painting of this. And I'm going to show you the graphite transfer technique and how to get started with this painting. This is a safe place to learn. You're not going to be marked. We're just going to try the, all these techniques out. So you've got your photocopy package or sorry, your photocopy thing, and you're gonna flip it over. Take your graphite pencil, any old pencil will do. It doesn't have to be any kind of fancy pencil and cover the back of this image with graphite. Just the image. I know it doesn't like go to the very bottom, so you don't have to go right to the bottom. You just need to cover whatever the image is on the other side. We may go through a few pencils doing this. This project, this little mini project is probably going to take you a little while to accomplish. It's not gonna be just done in one period. So I'm gonna get you started with this video. And then you're going to be left to complete it on your own. It probably tomorrow. So the graphite transfer technique we used in the grade nine course, um, possibly depending on what projects we finished. Uh, usually I do it with the lino block project and then I ask for you to use it again in the culminating activity. But some of you wonderful people uh, didn't have the opportunity, couldn't fit it into your schedules to take the grade nine course. So here it is. This is one of my favorite little art hacks when I'm setting up to do something that really requires good proportion and accuracy, and I have very limited time to do it. If I had all the time in the world, I wouldn't need this hack. But let's face it, that's not the world we live in right now. Ooh. Okay, so I've covered the back of the image of the Colosseum with graphite and I'm going to find a fresh page in my sketchbook because this is just a practice piece. I'm not doing it on watercolor paper. Oops. There we go. And you don't have to jam it right up into the the crease of your sketchbook, you can try to eyeball it and center it lower down. I need a clip to close on me. There we go. 
oh, I know what I did yesterday. A whole stand there. That's much better. Okay. So, yes, you may need a little bit of tape to tack down your photocopy while you do this next step. You don't need to go crazy over it. Just a little piece so things don't move around. I'm centering it on my sketchbook, kind of looking at where the edges land. Wouldn't it be nice to go visit this in real life? There's a bucket list item for you. All right. So I have graphite transfer technique. I have my image, I have my visual reference. I've covered the back with graphite. I've tacked it down in place just gently so it won't go crazy on me. And now I am going to carefully trace what I want in my painting. So I'm looking at this. There's some person standing here. There's a couple other people. There's buildings in the background. There's other tourists and signs and this fencing system. I don't want that in my painting. Okay, I don't want to do a 100% reproduction of this thing because then what's the point? I might as well just have the photograph, right? So as I trace, I'm going to be a critical thinker. What do I want in my painting? What is just kind of visual garbage that I don't want in my painting? I'll trace that which I want to keep and I will not trace the tourists and the signage and the, and the visual garbage and the hard little building in the background. I don't know what that building is. It could be super significant, but there we go. So the trees, just outlining this. I can sort of see this. All right, there's some trees back here. This little palm tree is fun. I'm going to put them in there. Whee. So it's up for you to decide. You can even stylize a few things. Take your creative liberties. Make your painting original from everybody else's in this class. There. Now that I've said that, there's going to be like cats and dragons and things flying in the sky. But hey, whatever. That's okay. You do you. Um, <laughs> the Colosseum, though. That's our main focus, right? So let's outline the details of this building. And I'm just going around there. And yeah, there's a lot going on with this. I know, I acknowledge that. <laughs> to do the really important parts that I think will be hard to capture when I'm painting. But I wouldn't go so far as to outline every brick that I see. That's a little that's a little too much. We have to go home at some point, right? But this is going to help us greatly in getting the correct proportions, perspective, all that tough stuff that would take you a long time to do correctly if we were just freehand drawing. 
this is a way of using technology in the art classroom in an effective manner to help us be more successful because the tracing isn't the final product. It's just a step in the journey. It also develops those fine hand motor skill muscles. If your hand's starting to cramp up, that means you're really using those fine mo motor muscles. Fine, fine, I can't talk. Fine motor skills, is that it? Is that what I'm trying to say? Yeah, I got some bobbleheads. Thank you. The nice thing about graphite is that it is sort of reflective. And if you tilt your head, you might see the shine of your tracings and be able to catch where you might have missed a spot. Did we not use the graphite transfer technique for the celebrity portrait assignment? Yeah. There we go. So we are doing a review. Good. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I remember using it in the grade nine projects, but I. Yeah, that's true. Oh, those COVID classes were a bit of a. Some kids learned some things and some kids learned different things, but in the end, we all did art. And I guess that's what you came for, right? Certainly not my entertaining skills. <laughs> Once you start to feel a little bored and find that this is feeling tedious, just remind yourself that it's a heck of a lot easier than doing it by free hand. So keep chugging along.
Again, before you move your image, sit back, try to get some shine from the lights to be sure that you've got everything. It's a bit of a challenge, not impossible, but it's a challenge to realign your tracings with what's underneath. So save yourself some trouble and just double check. You can use your cell phone flashlights perhaps to shine. If you think you're almost there, I'm using my one hand to hold my paper down so it doesn't move on me because I'm just learned the hard way. I'm just going to peek underneath. Can you see that? See how the image has been transferred onto the paper? So even that will tell me whether I missed spots. So there, I see I missed a little bit of detail in here. So I haven't moved anything. I can go back in. Thank goodness and finish getting these small details in here. What is a tourist's head and what is part of the building? That is my question of the day. Ooh, little, little windows. Oh my goodness.
I don't know what's happening. That doesn't make sense, that one spot. The one thing you should not do today is give up. Keep plugging along even if you're struggling. You'll never improve if you give up. So if you have your head on the desk, you're having a nice little schnooze, I would encourage you to come back into the group, pick up where you left off, and keep chugging along. All right, I don't even know what that is. That's just a mystery spot. Anyone else see what this, this spot right here you would think it would be an open arch, but it's not. Maybe we'll have to go there and take a look and figure out what is that. <laughs> All right. Hands up if you're done. Okay. Sorry to keep you waiting. So you can remove the image now. Ta-ta. And just set aside your graphite transfer technique page. And if you wish, you can tape the borders now that you can see where your borders are. Some of you are going tape crazy, trying to anticipate what I was going to do with you today. I didn't even know what I was doing with myself today. So, yes. If it's a little off center, that's fine. Again, I'm not marking this one. This is just for learning's sake revisiting the graphite transfer technique and a few other uh, artistic techniques here. So uh, you're going to need a Kleenex to start off with, not a paper towel. So I'm gonna toss the box to my first student there. And if someone could toss me a tape roll, if you are, if there's a, that's so trying to, okay, yeah, no, I'll take it. So remember, just to review, when you are taping paper, you need to de-stick the paper, uh, no, the tape, so that it doesn't tear your paper later. And you do that uh, on fibrous fabric, the fibrous fabric. I'm just going to lay it. You know what? I'm even going to go over the edges there so it'll be that much cleaner. Just a little cropping. Bop, bop. Is it straight? I don't know. Does it matter? We'll find out later. <laughs> okay. This roll of tape is difficult. Oh, your heads were down because you were waiting for me and I was being too fussy. I apologize. <laughs> Sassafras. All right. got a like on my video already. Oh my gosh. All right. What you looking for? Okay. not to waste too much tape. They always wonder why I need to order so many rolls of tape. Like, 
we use it. It's just a necessary tool. Okay, wow, thorough. That's what this is. Okay, so now we get to go to the fun stuff. Bring out your paint and your paintbrushes. You're gonna need a variety of paintbrushes, just like yesterday. And a... Variety of tape, uh, paints. <laughs> There we go. Beauty. Okay. And you've got your Kleenexes, right? So wake up your blue. We're going to start with the sky. I've got my wide flat head brush. And my blue paint. adding some water and we are going to do I don't want to pre-wet it because I've just been super frustrated with this this sketchbook paper and it's pilling and bleeding and all that jazz so if you have been successful with your washes and your papers behaved itself then you can pre-moisten but I'm just going to go right in there with my wash and I'm going to try to avoid painting over my Colosseum. So if you're unsure, take a look. I do want it wet. I want my colors to blend into each other. So I'm going to pop into the, woo, to the water and the puddle of paint that I've created. So yes, I'm being a little careful here. Happens once in a while. You have to work a little quick so that you can hide your brush strokes. If they dry on you, then it's a little harder. Now, in my visual reference, I've got some clouds, some happy little clouds over on this side here. And I like how they're balancing the, the Colosseum. These trees, I'm just going to paint over them. They're going to be a dark green anyways, and there's blue and green, so it's not going to affect it. But I'm going to avoid the Colosseum. Anyways, back to the clouds. You ready for this fun stuff? Clouds are sometimes can be tough to paint. They can be a... So many interruptions. They can be a little challenging to paint. So here's my hack for easy clouds. I put a little extra blue, a little extra water in the area where I want those clouds to be. And then with the Kleenex, not the terrible paper towels, I'm going to dab and pull up. You can go soft, you can go hard, and you've got nice little clouds if your contrast between the light and dark isn't enough go back in bring back more blue i didn't like it it was too washy there wasn't enough contrast between the light and the dark i'm gonna go back over here make that a bit more saturated i want to And then with the Kleenex, there we go. That's better. Just some nice clouds. And while things are still wet and going, don't forget to paint in the windows. This one is sky blue. And as a matter of fact, with your smartphones, 
you should get the visual reference up on your phones as well. So you have the color version. I can't do picture in picture while I'm working live. I'm not that technically adept. So if you want to snap pictures of my computer screen in the classroom right here, kids, if you need to take a shot, or maybe it might work on the black and white. It might on your photocopy. Um, it would be good to have the colored version available now. Not all of the Colosseum arches reveal light on the other side, just these few over here. Yeah, that's kind of it. There's a bit of light over, just a little. Still not 100% happy, the sky. Yeah, yeah. If you need to come up closer and get the pictures to find the visual reference, you can do so. You're safe to walk through the light. Remember, the camera's pointing at my sketchbook, so you guys are fine. Go. Okay. So we can review yesterday's lesson with this project before we jump into the scary building. And we've got some lovely shrubbery again. How lovely. Uh, we're going to mix our two contrasting colors, which would be, what did we get for the, the shrubbery colors? Green and red. Yes. Thank you. Random student in the back corner. <laughs> Who shall remain anonymous? Hello, viewer. So the trees, the, the cypress trees or whatever these are, um, they're a little lighter as they are closer to me and a little darker as they're further back. So let's start building up that base color. Remember to always be checking your colors on the on a color swatch.
can even, I like, I like having a Kleenex to get that extra little bit of random texture. You can use that effect again here on these cypress trees. Just messing around with it. Just aim, try to show that the layering, the overlapping by making the one that's behind darker than the one that is in front. Let the lines be a little jagged and random. How's the color quality? The color quality is better, eh, with this system? What do you guys think than the this document camera, than the Epson do document camera? Pardon? Yeah, I'm using my webcam. Instead of doing document camera to projector, I think the technology is better. Oops. Too need my so when I start a painting, generally, I start with the background, and that makes me feel like I've accomplished a lot, because it backgrounds take up a lot of space, right? Then if I'm still feeling a little unsure of myself, I'll do something simple that I know I can be successful at. And I will build up my bravery. So yesterday we looked at trees and shrubs and greenery and textures and all that jazz. So I'm feeling pretty confident that we can go in and do this area. without too much grief. I'm just using a swirling brush stroke to kind of get that texture. And then the ones in the background are quite dark. So in order to make them feel like they're further behind, these guys back here, even a little bit more over here, it gets quite dark. So I'm going to incorporate some blue, not just the red and green. I want it a little colder, a little further away from me. And test those colors before applying them. It's far too risky. Otherwise, that's a clean up box. Sam, can you pass that to me? All right. Oh. Okay, we were doing greeny blue for the background. For these dark areas. And 
that just pushes and pulls and creates that sense of distance, depth, and perspective by using value. It's all about the elements and principles of design, right, kids? Yay! One of the challenges we all face is making enough color to go the distance. There we go. go. Kind of one random palm tree. I like it. Have I fallen behind the class or are you guys ahead of me? Where are we in the race? Eh. Am I going too fast? Am I going too slow? A little too fast? Okay. All right, top challenge is working for the majority. All right, so looking at the Coliseum, looking at the color version of it, um, we see a lot of uh, ochres. That's like a, a dark browny yellow, very desaturated, not vibrant at all. These colors are gonna be quite muted and natural and neutral. That means we're going to be doing a lot of mixing, contrasting colors to tone down and keep them under control and keep them natural looking. Um, I also see some oranges, which are nice. That's part of um, why I picked this paint or uh, visual reference to paint is that it has that nice contrasting orange to the sky blue. So here, and it will make the overall um, painting a bit more aesthetically pleasing. So, looking at the Colosseum's co main color, it is a very washed out light ochre. So, if you have a palette that's like this, here's like your lemon yellow, right? No, oh, and the colors of the lights. This is my ochre. I would call it more of a mustard brown, mustardy brown. Yeah. O-C-H-R-E. I think I've seen the word oxide too, but. So if you don't have this in your palette and you're using something that's from the classroom, the way that you can get ochre is you take your yellow, add a little bit of red to, to bring it away from the lemony tint, and then throw in a little bit of blue. 
again, it's always primary colors, but just in such varying degrees. I'm gonna flip over to a flathead brush, a wide one, and I'm gonna do my first layer everywhere. So that, um, yeah, so that it'll look good. That's why. Test out your color, yes. Question. Yes, I'm because I'm gonna. It's easy to cover up. Um, light stuff that's way too vibrant. Um, so we're doing the lightest shade that you see in in the Colosseum. That majority color, the overall thing. See, I like a dirty palette because I can just take that ochre, dump it in here, and look, it picks up all the other colors that are there, enough water, and I could be successful. Who knows? Ha, ha, ha. That's good enough. <laughs> so I'm just going to lightly, and my brush strokes are also going to mimic the form of this building which is curved. Maybe lay your brush along one of those lines. I'm not gonna paint over my blue windows. That would be difficult to bring back. Difficult slash impossible. So I'm just applying the base coat, the first layer, the one that we're not going to lose our heads over. It's the lightest color that I see. And then we're going to build up off that. Yep. Some's going to be quite dark. How am I doing for time? Oh dear, look at that. Once you get this base color, I would say you are done for the day. Rhyming is great. I know you don't wanna stop. <laughs> However, You may realize that you're feeling very hungry right now because it's almost lunchtime. Yay! Get in there. And besides, we have to let it dry anyways, so it's a good time to stop. If you have accomplished everything that I've taught so far and you're a schmidge ahead of me, go ahead and start cleaning up your space. Um, and I'm going to say goodbye to my YouTube audience members and say, see you tomorrow. Same time, same place, same project. Uh, thank you very much for watching this video. I hope this helps you get started with a watercolor painting of the Roman Colosseum. Have an awesome day. Yay!